Mayotte, tu pois. Mayotte, ta fito. Mayotte, ka huia nga riki. Mayotte, ta vivi kia tū matau enga. Each year, a new intake of army recruits arrive to complete their basic training. They have just 16 weeks to prove they have what it takes. They'll be pushed to the limit as they transition from civilian to soldier. Kill the enemy! And not everyone will make it. With some of the most diverse weather conditions in New Zealand, Waiuru military camp is living up to its reputation with an overnight fall of snow. The recruits are now eight weeks into their basic training, and it's still not officially winter yet. It's typically normal. I mean, everyone thinks of Waiuru as a cold hellhole, and as you can see, it is. <laughs> the biggest thing that affects us as in training is, is things like slip hazards and whatnot. So we spend quite an amount of time teaching them to be cautious in the cold weather. It's making sure that they're rugged up properly. It's all about how to survive and fight and do their job in inclement weather. About 80% of them are blossoms and they shrivel up and die when the weather turns to poos. But we teach them to soldier on. There's no choice really. The way we train is all terrain, day or night, in all weather. A couple more days of this, and then um, as it starts thawing out, it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Just shit, sludge, wet. That's what they signed up for. Oh, I signed up for a challenge, oh, new things. Oh, here it is, team. Welcome. Some of them hate it already and just don't want to go back outside. You see some people can't even open their zips or use their fingers. It's good actually being able to apply the knowledge that we learn in the classroom, especially the layering systems. Some of us got it right, some of us forgot our kit. They, they know who they are. Now halfway through their training, the recruits have learned the theory of being a soldier. But they still have to master the skills of how to fight and stay alive in a war situation. Keep your knee on the ground, pretty much where it is. Fucking rifle on the shoulder, left hand down, and just put the right foot out. There's... Everyone get it? We'll see. Up! Let's see some aggression, man. Push through the pain. Don't get up. Keep pushing through. What do you want to do, the enemy? Dash! Down! Pull! Gentlemen, warfare is personal between you and the enemy. Train as you fight, do not fight as you train. You need to start digging deep within yourselves now, man. We're at the next level. Does everyone understand? Yes, Corporal! Right, let's put those words into action. Positions. The enemy does not care if you live or you will die. You will kill the enemy. What will you do? Kill, kill the enemy! enemy. Not what do you all do? Kill the enemy! What are you trying to do? Kill, kill the enemy! What are you trying to do? Kill the enemy! Learning how to fight is a dream come true for 19-year-old Widimu Tuimata. Prepare to assault! Prepare to assault! As a boy, he grew up hearing stories about his great uncles in the Second World War with the Māori Battalion. I thought that was awesome to hear that there was an actual battalion full of Māoris fighting in the war. And you know, I thought, you know, why not give it a go? You know, why not come join Ngāti Tumatonga, working together as one and as one nation? Aotearoa, since um, the enemy doesn't care if you're tired. Push through the pain. Crawl! Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're black or white, it doesn't matter if you're pink or purple, if you're Barney or if you're Winnie the Pooh, something like that. So long as you guys are, you know, together as one, you know, fighting uh, left to right of each other, you know, he's got your back, the other bro's got yours, and you've got both of theirs. You know, uh, just fighting together, sleep together, live together, die together, you know. Get around the pole! Push through! Push through! Oh my god! Fire off! 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 Fire off
Question. Let me tell you something. It gets personal, eh? It gets personal, all right? It's gonna be against you and the threat. All right, we train you for the worst case scenario, all right? Doesn't matter what weather it is, doesn't matter what terrain it is, we still push through. You've started something now. You've got to find that will to fight from within. No one else can give that for you, all right? We're not in an environment where we're sitting around in semi-circle plastic chairs, holding hands and expressing our feelings, all right? In warfare, it gets personal, all right? You need to push through yourselves because if you can push through yourselves, you are guaranteed you will motivate others. Grab your packs. Back to barracks. As the exercises increase in intensity, the recruits in turn become more prone to injuries. Okay, fight through it, all right? Fight through. There's also pride at stake. No one wants to be seen as injured, as they'll be put on light duties, known as LDs, and in worst cases, may have to leave their platoon. Being sent home or back squatted to repeat their training is a real fear. Many, like Recruit Hay, will play down any injury until they're found out. No, I just woke up, so like I woke up and I got out of bed funny. It was just that simple movement, and then yeah, and now I'm just like, but it'll be fine. I pretty much just have to do this to look, but um, yeah, I'm still hard though, it's just sore. Most recruits try to hide their injuries, but you can sort of see it uh, when they think we're not looking and as they walk around, they start to limp, we sort of pick up on these things. So uh, whilst I do believe in the, um, in the mindset of training rather than opt out, it's quite sad to see them leave. However, it needs to happen not only for uh, our welfare or their benefit, but also um, just to maintain the momentum of the platoon. It's more annoying than anything, you know what I mean? I don't need to be on LDs or anything like that. There's no way I'm going to be part of that group. I am where I am, <laughs> to be honest, it's really my pride. <laughs> Not much escapes the eagle eye of the instructors. And despite trying to reassure everyone she is fine, Hay is marked down as unfit and told to join the others on light duties. With no clue as to when she'll be able to rejoin basic training, this is a serious, and worrying setback. Halfway through their basic training, all recruits have to take the CFT, the Land Combined Fitness Test. Here they have to pass the exhausting tasks they would need in battle. I reckon you can barely stand like now with all the weight on. They're just trying to get up. While the injured have to sit it out, recruit Serena Hay is now fit enough to take part. And with her family already in the military, she has a lot to prove. I am the daughter of a warrant officer, class one. And my brother, um, he was in the last intake last year, and um, he actually topped the course last year. Keeping that one quiet too, just just because, you know, want to kind of see if I can do it myself too, get my own way through. So. Yeah, it would have just been nice to make it all the way through quiet, but apparently my army brat's attitude shows, apparently. So I've been trying to blend in. I don't really know how that, I don't know how to do that because I thought I was, so, but yeah. First in the CFT test is a jerry can lift, testing upper body strength to move equipment or people up onto vehicles or ledges. There's no allowance for gender or body size, with all recruits having to pass if they want to graduate. I don't think I'm going to pass. I'm not very good at um, strength and stuff, mainly like cardio. To achieve a pass, you must complete 15 times 10 metre shuttles in five seconds or less per repetition. For recruit Lennox Winnie Tunner, it's a day of reckoning as she hopes to prove herself to her family. I am the older sibling of six. It wasn't a very stable home for a bit. My dad passed away when I was 14 from a brain aneurysm, and my mum went to prison just after, so when I was about six years old, I went to go to the Canaan. So I pretty much was raised on like old school Māori values. When my nan was 14, she had my dad, and she raised all her siblings, and she raised all her kids, and then she raised my cousins, and then she raised us. 
and she's done it all by herself. And it's something that I aspire to do. Like, I don't want to go back to her asking for help again, kind of thing. I don't want to leave and know that she had done a good job raising me so that I could be the adult that she wants me to be, kind of thing. Recruits also have to carry jerry cans to simulate the moving of an injured comrade on a stretcher. 15, 16, After a tough journey to get onto basic training, recruit Priya Clark has been suffering from pain and it appears to be troubling her again. For me, being Indian and joining the army was probably like a little bit different to what normal Indians do, I guess. Um, and being like a female especially, I think it was a little bit of a shock at first. Especially my grandparents, I wasn't sure what they were going to say, so I didn't say anything. But they're all really supportive and they will laugh at me, call me a heart out. <laughs> Still injured and after failing to carry the jerry cans, Clark now has a difficult decision to make. Uh, it's up to you. Do you want to carry on now? <laughs> or join in with another group and try again? <laughs> So it's up to you. Um, I'll do that, Corporal. Carry on. <laughs> Clark and her platoon have one final test left for their battlefield endurance, a run in full combat gear. Achieve a pass. You must complete four kilometre circuit in under 32 minutes. Weapons, double hand weapon carriage. Stand by. Go! Having to run in kit weighing 23 kilos can be an extra disadvantage for some recruits. There's one standard for all. Um, gender, body type, doesn't matter. Women find, uh, tend to struggle a lot more on this one, and men find it easier. So if you get a 100 kilo man, he's carrying 20 kilos, that's 20% of his body weight. If you get a 50 kilo girl, she's carrying 40% of her body weight. Recruit Rua Brock is first in at 23 minutes. Nice, hey. That's good. Despite being previously injured, Hay pushes herself to the limit and is the first woman to finish. Almost bombed. We've got three more minutes. Three more minutes to get in. They can do it. 26, 43. The other recruits are cutting it fine. And for Sophie Early, she finishes in time, but is taken down with an asthma attack. On the grass, on the grill. Hands on your yeah. head, hands on your head, breathe it in. In the nose, out the mouth. It's all over. Recruit Ro has just come off LDs with leg injuries, but having to run in full kit is causing her problems. <laughs> Meanwhile, recruit Runga has just 20 seconds to make it, and her platoon have run back to give her support. Last 10, pump it, pump it. But it's not enough. 32 30. So it's 30 seconds out. Nothing much I can do about it now. I'm glad it's, it's over. Because <laughs> it <has> sucked. <laughs> Feeling the pain of her injury, recruit Clark now has to pull out of the race. Being unable to finish the CFT doesn't look good for her future. She's starting to feel like she's losing the battle and getting left behind a little bit. Like, personally, it's not looking really good at the moment, so I don't know what's going to happen. There's been a few comments from the staff saying that she may have to consider whether she's going to continue or not. The following day, recruit Clark is put on light duties, along with fellow roommate Ella Northey. They've been sent for MRI tests to check the severity of their injuries. Uh, a little bit nervous, because um, we're getting our MRI results back today. I mean, if it's bad, then we could get back squatted into the next intake, which is quite scary. Try not to think about going home, just trying to think positive because I know for me, if I start thinking the negative stuff, like, and that will bring me down, so I'm just trying to stay as positive as I can. While Clark and Northey wait to hear their results. Back in the barracks, the recruits have made a grave error with their rifles. Where's everyone? Make your rifles up. 
Hurry up. Yeah. I will not leave my rifle unattended. I will not leave my rifle unattended. I will not leave my rifle unattended. If they leave their rifles, uh, there has to be someone obviously watching them at all times. Um, in this case, I walk in the room, there was eight rifles and no one in there. So it's, yeah, they left their rifles unattended. So we uh, deal with that. I will not leave my rifle unattended. That's just a big thing, you know, especially once we get out in the field. Um, that's your that's your weapon, that's what keeps you alive at the end of the day. That's what fights the battle. And if you lose it or can't find it, you're absolutely useless. I will not leave my rifle unattended! I will not leave my rifle unattended! I will not leave my rifle unattended! Oh. 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 It was not good. It sucks. It's like his favourite thrashing for us. It burns. What I wanted to do was all of us take our rifles, but they were like, no, we'll just leave it here. <laughs> and someone watch it, and just what happens. Yeah. You learn from it. Hopefully, they learn from that. I did. Look after it. The 64,000 hectare Waiuru military camp with its varying terrain is perfect to create authentic war exercises. Today the instructors are laying out markers for the recruits in case they lose their way during tonight's intelligence gathering exercise. So they'll get parked up out there at the end there and then as they drop to get as close as they can undetected. The better the scenario, the better they embrace it, you know what I mean? Exactly. Because I can tell you on my one, it was pretty dumb. We just walked out to the hill, they're like, okay, crawl up to here in the middle of the night, and then we went home. It was no real, you know, like, we didn't have that sort of excitement, you know what I mean? We just want to create a scenario that probably stimulates them a bit more uh, in regards to, you know, not only knowing that, oh, it's a nice thought, but actually having a purpose behind it. For example, like gathering intel rather than just going out there just to be ninjas. All right, man, good luck. I'll be yeah. on the other side. I like training recruits. So this job uh, it requires a ridiculous amount of hours. I'm here posted on the company, so I've just got myself to worry about. And I don't mind it, because you see them go from nothing to something, and that's always a good thing. Especially when you march up, you know, and they're, they're, on, their, um, they're on their number ones. You know, mum and dad are clapping and crying and all that good stuff. And to an extent, you can actually claim the benefit of, you know, I trained that person and it'll be someone to be proud of. Back at the barracks, the recruits are doing a refresher class on some of the skills they have learned this week. We are testing our hand signal skills right now. The skills kind of like Chinese whispers. Like one person starts one end, there's a whole sequence of hand signals, and we pass them on. Did you already just said then? I got this. Yes, And then I got this. And then I got this. I had to speed it up. Um, Speeding up, eh? Apparently, well, like, faster. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> Sweet. Like, hand signals are definitive, okay? Sweet. Halt. Scout group. Come to section commander, okay? Nice and simple, definitive, clear signals. Yeah, this means hurry up, okay? Yeah, this is hurry up. Not whatever the fuck Coombs King started doing. <laughs> but for one recruit, these lessons could be coming to an end. Recruit Clark has just got the results from her MRI scan, and there is a possibility she may have to leave her platoon. All right, the boss has just called, and you guys have an LDF lesson to catch up on. So form up in the driveway, do that now. While the recruits think they're off to another classroom lesson, in reality, they're being set up for a surprise mission. And to keep Clark's spirits up, she has a major part to play. So today we're going for a night stalk and um, I'm getting kidnapped. It's a bit hard to say because like, obviously I had some bad news today, but um, being able to do this and like, it's kind of fun. And I get to watch everybody else with this reaction as well, so. I like up to the phone. Step it off screen, ladies. By the left, quick, smart. Smart! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. As the recruits march to their class, they're held up by masked gunmen. Go on, go on, go on, go on. 
Recruit Clark is then kidnapped. People just came out of the truck and oh, I just couldn't believe it. It was oh, it was so scary. I've just had a call from the platoon commander. He's given me some intel. I'm going to drop you out in the location that I think they've taken recruit Clark to. Your key task to gain as much intel as you can, trying to suss out the enemy and took our mate. Make sure that you're not seen. Make sure that you're also not captured by the enemy. The enemy and Clark's kidnappers are in fact Sergeant Pennyha and Corporal Dowdle. From a head count, it appears two recruits are missing, and no one has any idea where they are. Come on, off sheep. Come back to the shepherd. Let's go. I'm cold. Um, I don't know. There's people out there, and we've got glow sticks on us. And if we got lost, um. We had to crack them open and wave, and then our um, bosses will come get us. Yeah, it's called the Glow Sticker Shame. And they're real far away. We think it's Kiri Ona and Wanitana. You two all good? Yes, sir. Where's the other one? All right. Can you find red, did you? Yeah, fill in the uh, river. The river's by deep bait. Yeah, a little bit. You all good? <laughs> How deep did you go? <laughs> So you almost found that piece. I didn't touch the floor, he grabbed me. Oh. Before I even went under. Good work. Thank you, Sachin. She almost drowned, but it's a good thing I'm a love girl. <laughs> I like, went under and I screamed, and then he grabbed me. So I was like, nah, let's go back. It's all a learning curve. My boots are pretty good here. I like, sprayed them with some heaps of resistance, and I just like walked over the water. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, fuck. You too. Jesus. Yeah, oh, you too. <laughs> Oh, these sticks and shit <laughs> Oh, I loved it. It was so scary. Um, but it was great to put all the practice into play. Um, like everything that we've learned in these last seven weeks. I just went whoosh, straight in the stream. Like I don't know if you can see, but it come up to here, and I was like, <gasps> just panicked for a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so like this is definitely soldiering. Do they look right? No. Oh, yeah. no. It doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look right to you? I don't know. It's never been that Oh, no, yeah, that's pretty small in the yeah. Should be right. The following day after the night exercises, the officers are having their weekly meeting. Here, the recruits' medical reports are discussed. Yeah, two of the MRIs got their results back. Um, at the moment, all I've heard is that it's bad news. Unfortunately for recruits Clark and Northey, their injuries are so severe they'll have to go into rehab. And if that doesn't work, they'll be forced to leave the army. It is hard, like, hearing them carry on with their lessons and everything, and knowing that I'm in here packing my bag because I have to go... It does suck a lot. Because <laughs> well, I know I've wanted this for a while. It's really sad leaving all the girls and everybody. If it's what has to be done, then I guess it has to be done. <laughs> K-1 
coming up next week. Watch up on the run, let's go! Get the fuck out of here! Where is the cover, mate? Hey! Hey! Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.